And, and minor carnage. Yes, a minor one, taking care of so many bandits. It would have been a major one if we just... It's only a major one if we take care of all of them. Yes. Well, the boon is that I will personally guide you to this bolt hole of his. If you don't have to kill him, I just want to see him uh, out of business. If you would be so kind. Well, certainly. Yeah, Tempest can't help but just, just turn. Specifically, he's turning slowly to look at Fargus. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Well, see, I have no problem putting out of business. I get the same feeling you're the one that may blow his head up. Um, perhaps. Why, why would I be the only one who would choose that option, though? I think more more people here have this that opinion. Well, of course, Hiram, but Hiram likes to dismantle things. And Thomas would like to be beheaded. Yes. Yes, how you go about the business of putting a Rav out of business doesn't bother me. I would just like him out of business, and there would be others here in the city who would much appreciate him being put out of business. It would make trade and Commerce and money flow so much easier. I'm very sure it would. Well, I believe it's inspection day for him. Fantastic. How about you five? Let me know when you're ready to leave. I'm packed to go. Usual place. Tempest smiles and sort of looks over at a dark corner, and then looks back at the shade. As I said, Tempers, your humor is beyond me. Always a pleasure. Shade will uh, give <coughs> a uh, a bow of swords. It's almost as if you can read the sarcasm in it and walks out. Tempers will sort of lick his uh, lips slowly and bite down on his tongue. Ah, well, now there's an offer for you. A very ominous and creepy offer, but an offer. Well, to let me now, I will be paying for that. <laughs> Interesting friend. More we business acquaintance. To, we all seem to have a few interesting acquaintances. Indeed, that includes me. I suppose <laughs> I have something else to share since... We're in this room. Everyone looks That's... at him. I, uh, I managed to pull some strings last night before I went to bed and, uh, managed to confirm that two of the guards I know best are still working in the town hall. Specifically, they attempt to do their best to follow the teachings of the Great Gold Worm, and they are the two guards who watch over the town hall at night. I can put you in touch with them, or you can just merely give the word that you are with Bjorni. I've given them your names, and if you have need or cause, perhaps something goes awry, and you are locked in the cells. Perhaps something could be arranged for you. Ah. A useful connection indeed. Thank you, Bjorni. That and Bjorni will uh, reach into one of his uh, his apron pouches and uh, pull out a small vial containing a liquid which he'll slide across the table to Thomas. It's become apparent to me from your stories that you might be fighting more undead in the future. You might have need of that. I have used that before. Well, a substance like it in my days, and it has achieved results. This is holy elemental oil. Uh, oils can be used as a quick action, and uh, oil. this elemental oil doesn't give a bonus to attacks or damage, but it causes the weapon to deal a particular type of energy damage. In this case, uh, using this holy 
Elemental Oil will cause your weapon to deal holy energy damage for a battle. Which for undead increases like frit, frit range crit? Yes, almost all undead are vulnerable to holy energy, which means the crit range increases to 18 to 20. That is handy. <laughs> Almost will nod towards Vioni, mumbling something about undead and dragons, minions and druids and all. Oh. And then ask for another drink from from Vioni. Yes. Regardless of whether it's morning or not. <laughs> and uh, that will take care of all of the uh, all of the icon relationship dice, except for the resolution of fives, which I can handle on my own. Thank you. <laughs> the fives sh shall be the fun bit. Yes. yes. At, at any rate, I, uh, now I promise there's gonna be no other interruptions if you wanna fucking leave this tavern. <laughs> All right. Sudden, suddenly, come, suddenly, come in. This apparition appears in the room. Wait, what? In a similar tab or tavern, like. The Ravinger is confused at all these people showing up. <laughs> <laughs> I have an information that uh, Leon will be coming to fight you. So <laughs> take this mummy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, I, have, right. I have information that a dwarf will be coming to see you. Catch him and we will give you four dwarven fighters. <laughs> oh. we, have an, we have information that an expensive cube is coming to see you. Uh, so should we, maybe, should we buy some stuff before we leave? Yes, well, that, that is something you folks will wish to take care of as well. Before you leave uh, Foghaven, uh, you may spend your fortunes on purchasing items. I will link you folks again to the Foghaven shopping list. I have no more money, so... Tempest, you have money. <laughs> I'll also, spend for, all that. for divining that magic item, that toenail, do you only get one shot, or is it like an everyday thing? Did you guys get gold in the last session? I sent you how much money you got. You did. Throw up. I sent you a little. Um, I sent you. I sent a little bit. Like Leon looks to Tempest, and there's a little bit underneath it for you. A little bit uh, For divining the toenail, I would say that Dwo Hero would only have one shot at that. Like he gave it his what he could do, and he got what he got out of it. I'll resend it and start to you, Griff. See how it mo somewhere else. You look at it. Ah. If, if, if oh, someone God. else wants to attempt to divine the item, by all means, you can attempt a divination on it. Just don't, don't, don't get worse than an eighteen. Not worse than 18? I mean... Because no, then you will be... In you the really island. wanted the dragon just... The dragon it. drags know, you through the heat. <laughs> as a, as a reminder, it is a difficult divination. That's a hard check. And uh, Manakai for all failed the check. I mean, I can certainly try it later. To be fun. If you want. Sure. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do that after we've done some murdering. Let's let's deal with this problem first, then we can take care of Tim Thomas's problem. Afterwards. I've decided I have a little bit of more money left over, so I'm going to buy another healing potion. Okay. I have twenty gold. Does anyone have like thirty left over? I I now have twenty gold. Oh. I have, like, so if we have all the someone goals. with ten, we can make it into a healing potion. What did you do with the money that you were paid last session, Manakai? I bought a potion and a rune. That's right. That's all. Uh, that's all my money. So. That's right. Right. I just, I just, oh, I just and you folks, I just hold grip out of my and, and you folks may start loading the bandit hideout map. I've made that available, and I've already put your tokens on there. I'm going to oh, buy no. another, another free healing potions. Yes, Griff. Leon's generosity in still keeping the money for you. I don't know. There's an oil and a rune stack. Hmm. Uh, no, they would not stack. Damn it. Like magic However, items. In the of course, they only lost one battle, so having more than one is never bad. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. the effects of oils and runes only last for a single battle. Also, on Manakai's request, I created macros for um, the runes, so we don't need to like check on the table what they do. The random effect will be rolled automatically. Uh, do I technically use my spear as a spellcasting implement? The spear is not a spellcasting implement, so... Uh, I mean, can you actually use it as a spear to like be a weapon? Hmm, what? Are you, actually, are you actually using the spear as a weapon? Uh, I have like a, one point. I, I would... You know what? Fuck it, fine. It can be your... It can count as a... It can count as a wand for you. <laughs> okay. 
It counts as yeah. evil. Oh. It, or, or rather, not, right. a, not a wand, because that would be arcane. It can count as a holy symbol for you, since that's divine. Yeah. It won't holy count. It won't. It, it won't count as a staff, but it can count as a holy symbol. So it can count as your spellcasting implement. Of course, right, the high druid holy symbol is a weapon. So, so when you <laughs> so when he applies the oil, does it have to depend on what side he applies the oil to? <laughs> no, it'll count like as a spellcasting implement. It's a holy symbol. <laughs> I mean, it's no. made of wood. It's like a gnarly leaf on it. Okay, so I've just spent two hundred gold, two healing potions, and one oil. Okay. Yeah. So which totals 200 gold. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna buy a uh, spell Does casting. anyone gold? actually need any gold? Because I've got 36 left. Well, oh, if, I could, if, if I could have 30, I could, I could buy a healing potion more. Sure, have 30 gold. Alright, I'll, I'll buy another healing potion. And be like, dirt poor. <laughs> but hey, I, 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 I give you 30 gold pieces. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, you I spent 30 gold pieces on... <laughs> oh, I spend it. So, I have a healing potion more. Was there something you wanted to say, Asma man? Uh, just that I buy, I will buy a random rune effect for spell casting implement. Okay, well, you can just buy the rune, and you will, apply it later. you will apply it to what you want to use it on yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's a free action to use it? A quick action. Quick, quick action, all right. Quick. It, takes only, it takes just a moment. <laughs> but that might be quite useful. Yeah. You know, a smidge of a moment. <laughs> Right, uh, permanent magic items don't uh, exist as uh, something you can really purchase in this game, so all the treasure you get has to go to something. Might as well be the runes. Disposable income! Hmm? What? Disposable income? Anyway, uh, Oh, I thought just disposable <laughs> gum. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Disposable <laughs> gum! I'm I supposed see, to end disposable I, gum. I see, I see everyone has loaded the map except for Manakai. Okay, all five of you have loaded it. Good. You can stop moving your tokens then. Oh. <laughs> Suddenly, a fight. Yes. A, uh, in that case, uh, you folks leave with Shade. I'll go ahead and uh, put Shade... Nah, I don't need to put Shade on the map. Shade's there. It's fine. Uh, He's so still can't even see him. A cold rain has been falling in the area all morning, which you could tell from, say, like the water dripping off of Shade's cloak. It gets worse as you leave Foghaven. Waves crash along the shore, and a strong wind full of stinging salt whips against your faces. The trip is arduous through the mud and the sand, and you have to shield your eyes on occasion to see where you're going. Still, you're competent travelers, and Fargus has endured many rains in his day. You reach the sheltered cove by late afternoon, and Shade is leading you to the same bandit hideout because it's an easier landmark for him to show you to the bolt hole. Right. Uh, he'll say that uh, basically, like, if he were to try to like wander off into the fucking wilderness to find it, he'd never find it. He has to use the bandit hideout, the mansion thing, as a landmark. Which uh, he'll explain, uh, you know, see, he'll offer this for free, basically. That, uh, of course, uh, the Melkors, uh, you know, as they did, own quite a bit of land in the region, and uh, this was a hunting lodge used by the Melkors last century. No, of course, you're safe. Yes. Um, yeah, of course, of course. At any rate, uh, you reach the sheltered cove, uh, the cove that you located so amazingly well with your checks uh, two sessions ago, uh, by late afternoon. And if you want to keep going, uh, you'll reach the bandit hideout by nightfall if you wish to uh, reach it by night. I think we should, actually. Sure. We're running out of time. So. Yep. Okay. Uh, in that case, you folks continue to uh, press through the rain. Uh, it's a bit uh, a bit difficult to see, but uh, you do end up reaching the location at night. And now I'll go ahead and impose some light rules and uh, actually uh, give some folks a little bit of light generation. If I can... I, you know, I don't think I care enough. <laughs> actually... <laughs> I just thought about it and realized I don't really care enough, do I? Yeah. Yeah, they yeah look I care cool, enough. Remy. They all look cool. Oh. You first time I've actually seen the light used properly. Let's, let's see here. Light D20. Why don't we uh, make that a bit shorter to signify like the closeness thing? That'll be fine. A little bit shorter though, because it is pretty heavy rain. And then I need to remove all the other light sources because I enabled all of them. We'll remove that one. And, you know, we have it on Dwohirum because Dwohirum seems reasonable enough for that. There we go. 
A very big light, guys, but... Well, well, when it comes to light, I can also use my dancing lights as well myself. You sure can. <laughs> I, I, I can make tons of little lanterns just randomly appear around us every few seconds. There you go. You have uh, reached the bandit hideout at night. Uh, even through the heavy rain, you can smell the carnage, the putrescence, the rotting bodies, and you can see the corpses lined around the building where you viscerated them using your various ways. They are bloated, rotting, maggots crawling through the flesh. You guys had a lot of fun here, didn't you? Uh, a bit. Well, it started out quite entertaining. Didn't end yeah. entertaining. Shade blinks and says, Wow, I, you... I see that uh, the bandits were not exaggerating. No. no. The two you caught are the ones I think you you caught, then. Yes. The, out of the building itself, there was no there were no survivors. Now, should we check this place over? They might, they might have left something. Okay, it says, if that is your will, the way to the, uh, to, uh, Rav's little hideaway is another three hours. Perhaps you might wish to, despite the smell, stay here? Uh, Whatever they've left is not going to leave. We should probably find the Ravinger first and deal with him. And I suspect they might have put up some traps in this area. Well, when we get very tired, we walk three hours more in this night. Yes. Would it be better to fight in, in fresh sort of condition? She says, We're already if, pressed if, on further than we needed to. If, you, if, you, if there are any traps, you're going to have a very difficult time seeing them. At least I am. Yes. More light. Or in the well, if we set the entire thing on fire... It is completely drenched with rain. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Still raining right now. <laughs> I so, think we should, uh, we should look it through, and then we can probably find some room in the uh, north of that that's not completely stench-filled. All right. All right. Just keep your eyes about. Okay. You folks uh, may go ahead and move. Oh, my God. So, oh, Fargus is certainly looking for traps while walking. I don't know if anyone while else you, is. While you use Dohira and he is like lantern. definitely yes. using his trap sense. Just stay close to me, Thomas. All right. A, uh, that is, will be a, uh, we'll say a, we'll say it's a wisdom-based skill check. I don't know whether Fargus and he has any trap backgrounds, though, for, like, actual, like, not in the woods inside mm. of building traps. Nah, not really. Okay, Tempest Becky, will. Tempest definitely does, yes. Go ahead and give me a wisdom-based skill check using... Uh, which Survivor of the Dwarven Games? Yes. And uh, we'll say that covers blanket any traps. Okay, plus three, plus three. Oh, well, wow. Clearly Thomas has also seen some bandit hideouts in this day, right? I don't think guard work involves traps. <laughs> <laughs> But it does involve bandits. <laughs> okay, you can you can roll to spot bandits if you'd like. <laughs> okay, roll to spot bandits. You don't uh, see any bandits except for that one. Are there any bandits? You don't see any bandits through the thick rain. Good. <laughs> also, your HP uh, is at twenty-seven. Oh yeah, I should have used that. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, uh, you folks did not get a full heal up, so any recoveries you might want to expend, you should. Uh, I'm 75% health. See, uh, I don't want to burn one. See, this, you should probably uh, burn one. This door is oh, wait, oh, yeah. was left Jeez. open, so it is open for you. I'll take point. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, then. Mainly because, you know, I'm not as squishy as you. I'm sure your extensive experience with going through this place once will help you in finding the place we're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, again, these rooms are completely covered with blood, gore, the bodies you left behind. Is that, is that flesh to, is that bone flesh from where I said that lightning off? <laughs> the, uh, the storeroom uh, still exists. Mostly intact, like, uh, 
it still does have quite a bit of food in it. Sure, something we should check through, certainly. Yep. Cool. Also, I rolled a random color, and Leon's lights today are purple. Okay. Perhaps, uh, Tempest, you would go to the north and search for some of the rooms up there, while we search for the storeroom. Does uh, Tempest have a uh, flint and tinder for, like, a torch or something? I will join him. Take Leon with you. I, 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 take, I, take, I take Leon with me. All right. Is that door uh, what, no? there? <laughs> directly, <laughs> that, do that door directly in front of you, Tempest, is closed and locked. Oh, come on. Surely I'll be able to pick it. Well, there's, there's, door, there's a door over here that's open. Yes, that door is still left open. Uh huh. Convenient. We, and, we came and, here last time. And this room that you're in serves no apparent purpose still. It has no fucking... It has no, like, maybe it, like, serves some purpose once upon a time. Nah. Door up there, yeah. The door up there to your north is closed. It is not locked. However, seeing as how uh, we are, are using your uh, DC-15, we'll say that Tempest manages just in time to spot a trap on it. <laughs> Nope. <clears throat> that would uh, trigger basically upon opening the door. And you may attempt to disarm the trap. What type of trap is it? Or is it just, can I just see a trigger? Well, uh, you're competent enough, and you've seen a lot of traps in your day. This appears to be a magical trap. Uh, um. Tempest sort of stares at it for a little while. Leon, are you good with magical traps? I know I'm good at magic. Well, I'm good at traps. I'm not sure if this will work together. Well, well look, looking at what we have here. Teamwork leads to many victories. Do we think, do we, think we can attempt to do some magical trap? Sure, you could attempt to do such a thing. Uh, we'll say that, uh, that Tempest can make a... Uh, This will be an intelligence-based skill check using his uh, Survivor of the Dwarven Games thing. Okay, 20 plus 2 plus 3. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that will manage to fail, and in the process, uh, it can start the trap. Now, I do believe the rogue has something for, like, a trap sense type of thing as one of his <laughs> skills. Yes, class feature trap sense. Let's see, if a rogue skill check involving a trap is a natural even failure, is that a natural even? It is! Yeah. You may re-roll that. Oh. That is enough to successfully fail to disarm it. And so that will start the trap, off the trap, and that will target both Tempest, Leon, and Thomas as a aura of frost shoots out from the door a wave of cold you're basically assaulting all three of you and oh, i will go a big black line would save me no it uh, targets everyone nearby and that would clearly <laughs> i thought the big black line would save me and this is against tempest that's against your physical defense. Yep. Now, if a traps attack roll against a rogue is a natural odd roll, it looks like you can force the trap to re-roll the attack once. Yep. Re-roll! No! Critical <laughs> hit! <laughs> no! This is, <laughs> this is against Leon, against physical defense, and this is against Thomas, physical defense. All right. It was a crit Tempest. Leon and Thomas take eight cold damage. Tempest takes sixteen cold damage. To the face. Oh, as gosh. as this as this aura of cold just completely directly assaults his face, and the door opens. <laughs> <laughs> and I need to do a recovery because what are they doing? What are they fighting? <laughs> Let's check it out. One, two, the eight. We should search this room first, right? Yes. Well, uh, might be in trouble. In searching the room, uh, it's a few weeks worth of like rations, like primarily like salted meats and like breads and stuff, enough to feed like a few dozen people for like two weeks. 
There's a lot of accumulated food in here, possibly from all of the caravans the bandits have raided and brought the food back here. I mean, it's just going to spoil if we leave it, so. We'll Could fill we up on, on those things, so we can eat but it for, tonight. Forgus wants to, like, run up. Yep. Sure. By all means, that door of quote yeah, close is closed and locked. <laughs> yep. Somewhere up here. What happened? Oh. He's just using a pull. blast of ice. <laughs> there was noise. Well, uh, what did you Gun manage to do this time? Uh, yeah, I see. Uh, Unfortunately, apparently, apparently, Tempus. He 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 may have um, not been able to disarm it correctly, Tempus as you see ice. by the frost covering the ceiling. That's one way of putting it. On the bright side, anyone wanted icicles? The uh, the room that you've opened up there appears to be a library of sorts, with uh, quite a number of books on the shelves still. You've got two little reading couches off there to the right. You've got a table with uh, some uh, some desks that are full of like notes and what have you. It's the entirety of the room. If you would uh, like to spend the time uh, looking through the room. Which I don't know whether well, we'll you would. We'll tell the others also about how good the food will be tonight. Yes. Among, among the numerous tombs, and there is quite a number of tombs in here, you find tomes. Excuse me, not tombs. You find oh, a book entitled Arcana of the Twelfth Age. Oh. Oh, we need the 13th edition. The, uh, this, book? this book collection, uh, you imagine, would be worth a few hundred gold pieces if you could haul it with you and find a buyer. Well, oh. well, at least we found fuel to cook the food with. <laughs> <laughs> yes, these beds. No one will need those. Yeah, those are benches of sorts, and there's like little rugs in front of the benches. No beds. Burn the rugs. <laughs> you could burn the rugs. I'm sure they have beds in here somewhere. Yeah, they do. Probably a kitchen as well. Well, there, there are kind of beds down here. Kitchen. Yeah, might be some uh, final ones. Those are all though. bloody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, preferably not those. Might be some better ones yes. over here somewhere. There is a uh, door up there to the north. Ooh. From previous visits, I would guess it just leads into the hallway. Probably. I retreated oh, back up there during the fight. <laughs> so. Should we head to what was the Ravengers seemingly office? Sure. This uh this room that you're passing by, Manakai, with the door, the door is closed and it says treasure room. What? Oh. How did we miss that? It's obviously well, a trap. There might be another way in through the main room which might not be as locked and trapped. You, you know, uh, Tempest getting closer and looking at that, with that 15 that we're still going to use that you rolled? Yeah, that's trapped. Same trap. No, dumb trap. Mm. Do I want to try this out? Go right ahead. Let me, How uh, do we go to the other side, though? Reveal some as you folks walk. Uh, that room up there is, uh, is open. The door was left open. And, uh, you, of course, step in here to the, uh, the council table. Will you quit fucking moving and scattering, goddammit! <laughs> 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 Alright. Alright. Okay, we're gonna try this again. All of you get off the map. Now, I'm gonna put you back there, and you're not gonna split the party so that I can tell you what you see instead of you just guessing, alright? <laughs> alright. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the council room is, uh, quite a bit covered in blood. As you folks left it, there's some of, uh, Fargus's blood there, and some of Thomas's dried blood there as well. Most of it, I think. <laughs> oh, well. Stone golem on the floor. Uh, yeah, stone pile over here somewhere. Yes. Remnants. Uh, council room appears to have been abandoned. Uh, there's like a number of uh, papers. There's like a map of the region against the wall here in the back that your light can just reach. The map doesn't say super secret hideout on it, does it? No, it does not. This uh, room that I know Manakai was just looking at appears to have been the winery, where there were so many racks 
containing what you presume were all sorts of fantastic bottles of brandy. There's currently only eight bottles of brandy in here. Thomas, make an intelligence-based skill check using your bartender background. Oh, yes. <sighs> the most, uh, the most important background. It's it is. It, it definitely is. Uh, my level plus my background plus my modifier. 